Because at the moment, the moment you, you start mentioning your past, this is going to ruin your marital life. This is going to ruin your marital life. Take care and bear with us. Insha'Allah, we'll see you after the break. Dear brothers and sisters, this life is transient. Its pleasures are temporary and full of temptations and tribulations. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said that this world is the prison for the believer and paradise for the non-believer. Which means you cannot do whatever your nafs dictates. Therefore, mind your steps and avoid the traps set by the Satan. And to know more, join me on... Welcome back, brothers and sisters and dear viewers. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We were elaborating on the riya and showing off and its effects on the entire community. And we were discussing that disclosing one's sins not disclosing one's sins is not part of the riya. As a matter of fact, it is a sin to disclose your sins. It is a sin to disclose, to let the people know about your past. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in Sahih Muslim, All my ummah, kullu ummati, mu'afa illa al-mujahireen. All my ummah will enter the jannah except those who disclose their sins. Those who make their sins known to the people. It is a sin. It is totally haram. And it will ruin your marital relationship. If you tell your wife, I was this and that and that and that before I married you, or she tells you I was doing this and this, that's the end of your marital relationship. Finish. Even if you are having happy and uh, marital relationship and healthy relationship, after saying that, this will be there, stuck in the mind of your wife and stuck in the mind of yours. For instance, if you are late, your wife will start thinking badly about you. Say, maybe something happened to him. Maybe he is now longing to go back, back to the past. If your wife is late, you will say, have the same feeling because of this wrong and evil information that you got. So, never disclose your past. And if someone approaches you and say, okay, brother, tell me, tell me, before you start practicing the deen, uh, tell me how you were before practicing Islam. Tell him, brother, leave me alone for the sake of Allah. That is the past. I don't want anyone to know about it. Also, it is not part of Riyadh to look presentable, you know, to look presentable, nice, dressed, well, etc. That's not part of the Rijah. The When the Prophet Sallallahu was the, asked by one of the Sahaba that, Oh Prophet of Allah, one of us, he likes to dress, he likes to look presentable, he likes to look good. Is that Riyah? Is that Shirk? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, No, Allah is Jameel. Yuhib inna Allah Jameelun, yuhibbul Jamal. Allah is Jameel. Allah is the most perfect attributes and qualities and he loves beauty but the arrogance and the real kibir pride is to reject the truth and to belittle the people because the kibir the prophet sallallahu said anyone who has kibir a mustard a weight of the mustard seed the seed of the mustard in his heart he will never enter the jannah or smell the fragrance of the jannah so the sahaba were terrified so they said, but we like to look presentable, we like to have nice shoes, nice clothes. Is that part of Riyah? He said, no. That indeed is a way of showing your gratitude, showing your thankfulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because Allah is Jameel. Allah is beautiful, yes. Subhanallah. Imagine, imagine Yusuf alayhi salam, Yusuf. He got half the beauty of the human beings. That's why the women, they cut their fingers without feeling when they saw him. And we 
mentioned in previous episode that in the Jannah, when we see Allah, we become more handsome and our wives will become more beautiful. Why? Because we saw Allah. We saw Allah Azza wa Jal, who has the peak of beauty, the most excellent attributes, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here, Allah is Jameel. He has the most perfect qualities. The most beautiful one is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he loves Jamal, the beauty. But the real kibir or pride is to reject the truth. If you reject the truth, then you're arrogant and proud person. Or you look upon the people. You look upon them. You disdain the people. So you look from top. That is also a sign of arrogance, as in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said. Now, what is the remedy of this disease? We talked about it. We talked about the signs of hypocrisy. What is the remedy? What is the cure? The remedy, my dear brothers and sisters, is the Tawheed, number one. To know the Tawheed, the oneness, the belief in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and singling him out subhanahu wa ta'ala with all our actions, all our deeds. We do all these things only for his sake. Seeking by that his pleasure subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is the first thing. You know the Tawheed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Zumar, that is Surah 39, Ayah 36, أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ بِكَافٍ عَبْدَهُ وَيُخَوَّفُونَكَ بِالَّذِينَ مِن دُونِهِ وَمَنْ يُضْلِلِ اللَّهُ فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ هَادٍ The meaning, is it not Allah enough for His servants? But they try to frighten you with other gods besides Him, for such as Allah leaves to stray, there can be no guide. So, you should not be frightened by anything. You should not be scared by anything. You worship only Allah Azza wa Jal. And you single Him. And you rely on Him. And you depend on Him. And He will be your protector. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. He protected you when you were a little embryo in your mother's womb. He protected you in this life. So He will protect you throughout your life. Put your trust in Him. And do things only for Him. That should be always the motive behind your deeds, insha'Allah. The second, insha'Allah, thing that the second uh, remedy, that knowing what Allah has prepared in the next life. SubhanAllah. Brothers and sisters, what Allah prepared for us in the Jannah, if we really worship Him sincerely, sincerely from our hearts, what Allah prepared in the Jannah is something unbelievable. We cannot imagine. If you try now to imagine the Jannah, close your eyes. Close your eyes and try to imagine the Jannah. Try to imagine the rivers in the Jannah. What rivers they come to your mind? Mississippi, Nile, Danube, Euphrates. These are the rivers they come to your mind. But the rivers of the Jannah are different. Try to imagine the palaces in the Jannah. You cannot. Because the pictures that will come to your mind are the palaces which you have seen in your life. But the palaces in the Jannah, they are made. One brick is gold, another brick is silver. The palaces in the Jannah, the rivers are flowing in the palace. You are in your bedroom. You are in the room. And the rivers are flowing from underneath. Rivers of wine, rivers of milk, rivers of honey. You cannot imagine. Because that is the real home. This life is nothing. This life is transient. Everyone will leave it. Everyone will die. But the real life and the real home, the real peaceful home is the Jannah. There, eternal life. No troubles, no problems, no anxiety, no worries, etc., etc. So that's what we have to think. Think of what Allah has prepared for you. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you not to do this because it is not good for you. Don't drink alcohol because it's not good for you. Don't womanize because it's not good for you.